It can sometimes be hard to follow France's history and all its revolutions. 1789, 1830, 1832, 1848, 1871. It's easy to get lost in all these dates, but only one painting really represents the idea of revolution in France and in the Western world. Liberty Leading the People was painted by Eugène de la Croix just after the 1830 revolution, the shortest of all French revolutions, only lasting three days. After the fall of Napoleon in 1814, Louis XVIII becomes king, making France, once again, a monarchy. This event is called the Bourbon Restoration. The tricolore, the French flag, used during the first revolution and under Napoleon, is now switched for the white flag, the Bourbon flag. Louis XVIII eventually dies in 1824 and is replaced by Charles X, who will, in 1830, decide to make very unpopular decisions such as disbanding the parliament and suspending liberty of the press. Two days after the announcement of these decisions, the revolution began. This is where Eugène de la Croix comes in. Though he did not fight during the revolution, he wrote to his brother afterwards while painting his masterpiece. I have undertaken a subject, a barricade, and although I may not have fought for my country, at least I shall have painted for her. It has restored my good spirits." Delacroix was born in 1798, and at the age of 20, he is painted by the artist that influenced him the most, Théodore Géricault. He was the model for this dead young man on the raft of the Medusa. Three years after Géricault's painting, the young Delacroix paints his own boat, the Bark of Dante, in 1822. It was very successful, and he repeated this success with scenes from the massacre at Chios, two years later in 1824. At that point, Delacroix was already considered to be one of the leaders of Romanticism in France, but his most famous painting was still to come. Liberty Ling the People is very powerful and became famous for its iconography and its composition. You have right in the middle Marianne, a personification of liberty, the revolutionaries around her aren't fighting to protect her. They are fighting with her as she climbs the barricade, elevating herself, making herself more imposing. She is strong and, as the title says, she is leading the people with, in one hand, a gun and in the other, the tricolore. The reappearance of the iconic flag after a 16-year hiatus must have been very nostalgic and inspiring for the French revolutionaries which would explain why it's present in every painting showing the 1830 revolution. We can look at Léon Cognier's scene of July 1830, where there is, of course, three white Bourbon flags, but also the blue, white, and red of the tricolore. The use of the blue sky and red fiery smoke is also seen in Liberty Leading the People as a representation of the flag. The colors are repeated in the crouched person's clothes, in the ribbon in the background, and very subtly on top of Notre Dame. Notre Dame is used to situate the action in Paris. It was, at the time, just as much associated to Paris than the Eiffel Tower is today. Finally, there are many people around Liberty, alive and dead. First, we can all associate them to different social classes or ideologies. There is this body of a revolutionary, but opposed to it, the body of a monarchist guard. There is also the working class and fighting next to it, the bourgeoisie. The bourgeois, represented with a top hat and a luxurious hunting rifle, could be a self-portrait of Delacroix, and this would make sense considering that, as we saw earlier, he felt shame from not fighting. There are also students, identifiable by the hat this man is wearing, which is part of the uniform of the École Polytechnique, and we can't forget the boy with pistols, probably also a student or maybe a worker. He seems to be very excited by the revolution, going in guns blazing, even overtaking Liberty herself. Apparently, this boy may have been Victor Hugo's inspiration for the character Gavroche in Les Miserables. Compositionally, Liberty Leading the People is very similar to Géricault's Raptor the Medusa, which we have made a video about. Both compositions are constructed upon pyramids with, at the top, a waving banner. There is a heavy use of diagonal lines, the strongest being the one starting from the bottom left of the painting and consisting of bodies, dead and on their knees, as seen in some paintings from Baroque painter Peter Paul Rubens, a common influence to Géricault and Delacroix. Finally, 
The position of the tiny flag on top of Notre Dame and the position of the tiny boat in the distance seem to be very similar. Liberty leading the people arguably surpassed the Raft of the Medusa as the referential French Romantic painting. Its movement conveys power. It makes you want to jump over the barricade and join Liberty in her battle against injustice. It's an inspiring demonstration of how powerful the people can be when it can unite and fight. <laughs>